Hello friends and welcome back to my crafty space. My name is Crystal and in today's video I am going to be working on my story number 16 inside of my December Daily 2020 album. So today's story is all about an older ornament that we have on our tree. I love telling this story every year. It's one of my favorites. I will pick one of the ornaments on the tree, either one that's been gifted to us uh, or to me as a child or ones that we made or ones that we have inherited from our family members. And what I like to do is to take that ornament and tell its origin story, how, how it came to be in our family. So uh, this year I chose my very, one of my very favorite ornaments on my tree. Uh, it is my Santa head, <laughs> which is right here. Um, I am a collector of Santas. I love Santa ornaments. And this, um, I actually have quite a few Santa head ornaments, like just Santa heads in my, in my tree, in our main tree. And, um, they, this tradition was started by my grandmother who gave me, who gifted me my very first one, this one. Uh, so I wanted to tell the story of this particular Santa and how this guy started my Santa collection um, and just why he means so much to me. So that is what we're talking about today. Uh, now I am using one of my product play class ideas, which is this right here. And I'm actually redoing it because I wanted my star to be bigger because I wanted this middle space for my text to also be bigger. Um, and if I put this on here, it just, it just wasn't quite positioned where I wanted it to go. So I took my template, uh, which you can get the template in the product play for class. I popped it into Photoshop, blew it up a little bit so that the, um, individual, uh, points were much bigger. And then I went ahead and cut out all of the pieces so I can just stick them down on the transparency here and then we'll be good to go. So I will take the 16 off and put it on the other one. And then this, you know, I love this and I love the colors of it. I just, mm. also my, I, I did my journaling for this story uh, before we unpacked all of our Christmas stuff. So I had the year wrong for when I actually got this ornament. So I needed to redo it because I was quite off in uh, my dating there. So, and, th and that means, you know, that's kind of important to me. I want to know how old these ornaments are. So uh, what I'm going to do because this is not going to take me very long since uh, a lot of the process you know, is already in that product play for class. So I can't necessarily show you everything here. Um, so what I'm going to do for you guys is I'm actually going to take you to my computer uh, inside of my Photoshop program to show you how I got this picture of my Santa head ornament to have this really white background. Um, I you know, I have a couple of different filters that I use inside of Photoshop to help me brighten up my photos, but to also really brighten up that background to make it, um, it's not necessarily a pure white, you can see the edges, but to make it closer to a pure white. So I'm going to take you over to the computer, show you how I do something like this, and then we'll come back over here, assemble this page together, and then read the journaling and finish up for today. So let's head over to the computer, and then after that, I'll see you guys back over here. All right, friends, so I am here inside of my Photoshop Creative Cloud program, and I have the photo pulled up that I'm actually going to use for today's project. So I want to show you how I take the photo from this, which uh, this was just taken. I placed my ornament on top of a white foam cord board, which I will link one in the description for you guys so you know exactly what it is that I'm using. And I have it in my basement on my craft table with my studio lights shining on it. Now, if I did not have a studio, I would wait until there's a sunny day and then uh, place my foam core board next to the window, but not in direct sunlight and take this photo with that natural light hitting the ornament instead. Either way, we're going to get a whole bunch of shadowing around the ornament, any um, like specks from dirt or like up here, I've got a cup stain 
from one of you know the drinks that I had down here. So I want to show you how to take your photo from this to having that super bright white background. So the first thing that I am going to do is I'm going to go over to my adjustments tab and I'm going to click on this one that's got like a half of a filled in sun and half of an empty sun. So that is your brightness and contrast. From here, I want to toggle that brightness up quite a bit. Um, it will kind of, what do I want to say, like overexpose it a little bit. So then I'm going to take my contrast and bring that up as well just to bring in some of those darker shades. So now that I have this brightened up, next I'm going to merge my layers together. So I'm going to go either up to the layer menu here and down to uh, merge visible, or you can hit that control shift and E and that will do it as well. So now I just have this one layer that I'm working with. The next thing that I want to do is open up my camera raw filter. So to do this, um, I actually don't know where it is inside of the menu items. It's got to be somewhere. I know that I can get to it by holding down the control and shift button on my keyboard and then clicking the letter A. When I do that, it's going to bring up this filter right here. It's called camera raw. And I want to do a couple of things inside of this particular filter. The first is to go over to the basics tab and I want to click on this eyedropper. This is my white balance tool. So from here, I want to select something that is actually the pure white color, uh, which for me is this foam cord board. So I'm just going to click on that and you're going to see that the temperature and the tint will change because what's happening is it's going to take this background, this this uh, particular spot that I am saying is white and it's going to adjust all of the colors accordingly on my image as if that spot was white. Um, so that's going to bring my colors to be a more true color. An example would be like if I said this pine cone was white, woo, then it's going to like do all this craziness. So I want to click on my white foam cord board. Next, I want to increase my clarity. I just like my pictures to be a little bit, it, it does add a little bit more shadow back in and give it some depth inside of the picture. And I also will increase very slightly uh, this dehaze. Now, when I do that, it is going to create some additional shadowing on the outside edges, which I'm okay with because we're going to get rid of that here in a second. Last, I want to increase my saturation just a tiny bit because when we change these colors and the clarities and all of that, it does kind of fade the colors inside of the photo. So I want to brighten those up just a little bit, saturate them just a little bit more so that the colors look more similar to what I'm actually seeing in real life. Then we're going to hit OK and it's going to change my photo to that. So now the ornament in the middle looks great, but the outside edges uh, need some work. So what I'm going to do is come to the left hand menu here and there is this tool that looks kind of like a lollipop. Now, if you're not toggled to this tool, it's called the dodge tool. There's also one that looks kind of like um, a hand making almost like an okay type of hand gesture. And then there's this other one that looks like a speckled circle. Uh, so if you hold on that button, it'll bring up the other tools that you can use. For me, I want to use the dodge tool. The settings that I like to use up here, um, I set my range to midtones and my exposure to 70%. That is going to make the individual strokes much brighter um, the more exposure that you have. So from here, I want to go ahead and increase, increase the size because it just makes it easier. And then I'm going to click and drag over the areas that are you know, dark that I actually just want to brighten up. Um, being careful to stay a little bit away from the image in the middle. Because if you get too close, it will start to overexpose the edges of your image itself. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to go over all of these little sections until they go away. Eventually they will go away. Uh, it's just brightening that particular spot until uh, it gets as bright as it possibly can, which is, you know, pure, pure white. Um, I'm not going to take it that far. I just want to make everything blend. I want it to look bright um, so that I can be happy with it. And because his beard is kind of yellowish and a little bit darker, I'm actually going to brighten the beard too. So I'm just going to come in here and give it a couple clicks. And to me, that looks a lot better. Yeah. 
Okay, so the last thing I need to do is go ahead and get this edited. Uh, before I move on, I just want to say that if you accidentally brighten something up too much, you can just undo that particular stroke. Uh, you can also come back over to the Dodge tool, hold down on the menu, and click on the Burn tool. And this does the opposite. This is going to make it dark. So I can come in here and darken stuff up if I feel like it needs to be darker. But I actually like it the way that it is right here. So I just need to go ahead and crop my image. I'm going to crop it for me to the page protector size. And then uh, making sure to keep it at 300 pixels per inch, I will adjust this to where I want him to go, hit the enter button, and now this photo is ready to print. So I hope that that was helpful for you guys. I figure since my process video is going to be pretty short today, uh, that this might be a little bit of additional content to help you guys out in case you are taking a flat lay type photos like this, uh, where you want the outside to be a more pure white than maybe your camera is picking up. So we'll go ahead, head back over to my craft table and let's get this page assembled. All right, so now that we are back at my craft table, the first thing I need to do here is to go ahead and adhere down all of the points of that star. So I cut my points out of five different papers from the Crate Paper Hey Santa line. These all came from the, um, actually not all of them, but most of them came from the six by eight pad. Um, and I, I wanted to use two reds, two greens, and then I have one that's black and white. And then I cut two of each of those those triangle pieces. Um, one that would serve as the front and one that's going to serve as the back. So if this is something that you also want to make, just make sure that you uh, cut out both sides. So you're going to have to cut out one um, of the shape the regular way and then you'll have to flip it over and cut out the mirror side so that you can get this uh, fully covered on both sides of that star if that makes sense. So everything is adhered down. I just put it with my roller adhesive there and uh, this piece of transparency that you see here is a graphics transparency. It allows you to print on top of it. That's how I was able to add my text into that middle section and then um, I could just adhere all of my stuff down on top of that. So I'll make sure to link those graphics transparencies down at the bottom. They are a little bit thinner because they are the printable version, but um, I've never had a problem with them. So they're, you know, it works for me. So once I had everything on there, I did need to go ahead and trim it down into that page protector size. The size that I always use is 6.875 by 8.25, uh, but I know you could also do six and a quarter by 8.25, or you could do seven by 8.25, just, you know, whatever size feels best to you. Then I needed to trim out my photo so we can see how everything layers together. And here's where you can see how that bigger space really uh, allowed for more of my ornament to show through. I like that the whole of Santa's face comes through that little window area. I debated adding some ephemera pieces to the uh, different sections of this star. So I pulled out some wood veneer, I pulled out some chipboard pieces, um, and ultimately decided to just leave it all blank, that the patterns were enough decoration for me, and it allowed me to keep my spread much flatter than almost anything else I have done in this album so far, which I kind of needed since I mean, everything's been really bulky, so it's, it's nice to have something that is not quite as bulky. Once I had that done, I could go ahead and get everything hole punched. Uh, this is the six the six hole punch that Allie recommends. I usually link it in my uh, show, not show notes. I want to say show notes in my description area down below. I will link it for you guys too. Um, and, but it is a little bit thin. So I do have to hole punch things in sections and that's why I did it that way. And then the last thing I'm going to do is take that 16 and I'm going to attach it with my tiny attacher there at the bottom. All right, friends, that completes this spread for today, uh, which I really like it. I like the simplicity and, um, you know, not every page has to be super complicated and that's a good thing. Uh, so I'm, I'm just glad to have a simple and also very flat page here in my overly bulky uh, December daily album. So, um, what we'll do is I will read you the journaling for this particular page and then, uh, we will call it a night. So uh, what I said is this, maybe I should grab, well, it's okay. I can read it. So I said in 1999, 
Graham gifted me my first ever creepy Santa head ornament. This was the Santa head that started the Santa tree and my large collection of Santa themed ornaments. I remember so many friends and relatives who didn't understand commenting about how creepy the Santa head ornaments were, but to us, they were never creepy. They were the ultimate special ornaments. They reminded us of her and of the spirit of Christmas. Now with my own home, I am proud to display and add to my creepy Santa head collection. But this one, the one that started it all, is the most special of them all. It's the it's one of the ornaments that I insist on hanging each year. Uh, so that is my Santa head ornament. <laughs> so this guy is over 20 years old. That is insane to me, right? 1999 to 2009 to 2019. Yes, over 20 years old. Uh, he did lose an eyebrow, which is kind of sad. But, you know, other than that, he's in amazing shape. So love it. Love my creepy head, my creepy Santa heads. Love them. So um, I hope that this gives you some inspiration that and gives you an idea for documenting a filler story about an ornament that's hanging on your tree. I think it's so fun to talk about the origins of these special things that we acquire over our lifetime. Um, I definitely recommend it. Definitely, definitely. Um, so I, yes, I'm, I am all set for today. I will be back again tomorrow with my next story in this book, which I believe is going to be all about Christmas crafts that uh, the kids and I have been working on together. So that's going to be a really fun spread. And I'm using this awesome page that uh, my friend Tashi taught me how to make uh, during the prep party. So I'm super excited to get this pocket filled up with memories. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, I would love a thumbs up down below and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can see all of the content I have coming your way in the future. Uh, until next time, hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I will see you all in tomorrow's video. <laughs> Bye now.